The Cavalcade of America, starring Henry Fonda. Tonight, the DuPont Company brings you Kansas Marshall, starring Henry Fonda on The Cavalcade of America. First, here is Gain Whitman. Good evening. There are plenty of new styles in this season's rain wear, and many of these new good-looking raincoats being featured in stores throughout the country are made of fabric treated with DuPont Zeland durable water repellent. Unlike ordinary water repellents, the protection you get with Zeland lasts through many washings or cleanings. So be sure to look for the Zeland tag when you buy. Zeland is one of the DuPont Company's better things for better living through chemistry. <laughs> Now, Kansas Marshalls, starring Henry Fonda as Wyatt Earp on The Cavalcade of America. There they go again. Taint safe for a person to cross the street no more. Uh, I come out here to raise my family, not to have them bullied and scared out of their wits. Where's the law? Where's our peace officer? Law? There ain't no law. Unless it's a 45 caliber kind. That was Wichita, Kansas in May 1874, the boom cow town that knew no law but that of the men who lived by guns and died by them. And out of this raw frontier and others like it have come stories of the peace officers who brought law and order. There were men like Fat Masterson, Pat Garrett, and Wyatt Earp. And around each there has sprung up a veil of truth and legend, strangely mixed, difficult to separate. But one thing stands clear through time. They brought law and order in their own way. This, then, is part of the story of Wyatt Earp. Late on a May evening, 1874, Wyatt Earp rode into Wichita. It was quiet. The cowboy who lounged at the end of the toll bridge and sang his song watched as the lean figure approached. Then you start to realize you haven't been so wise. Howdy. Well, howdy. Yeah, it's a right pretty song. Yeah, wrote it myself. Uh-huh. Just come to Wichita? Yep. Hotel close around? Well, just down there. You follow your horse's nose. Uh, much obliged. Not at all, stranger. Figured on staying a while? Maybe. Depends. See you around. Yeah, I'll be around, all right. So long. Get it. When you travel down the road, the odds against getting a room? None. Easy to get. Uh, by yourself? Sure. Uh, There's a sign here. Uh, want an inside or outside room? No difference. Hmm. Wyatt Earp. Is that your name? Yep. Earp. <laughs> you know what that sound like? Don't say it, mister. <laughs> All right. <clears throat> Just let it go at that. And say, Wyatt Earp. Earp. Well, what's the matter? You, you the same Wyatt Earp that was Marshal of Ellsworth a uh, piece back? I reckon so. Leastways, they pinned the badge on me. Then you the same guy that Buffalo Ben Thompson. Buffalo, the worst gun toter in these parts. How about that room, mister? Oh, gone. I know there's something familiar about that name. You see, Look, tell me I about I came it. here to forget about that. All I want to do is settle down and go into some kind of business. Now, got that room for me? Uh, sure, sure. Come on. <laughs> You know, uh, folks here just wouldn't believe it when they hear tell about uh, how Ben Thompson got thrown in calaboose. You see, uh, how about tell me about it? Nope. Oh, well, here's your room. Oh, but this Thompson thing, they say is how you... Yeah, much obliged for the room, old-timer. They say is how Ben Thompson quit cold in you. Is that right? Tell you a little secret, partner. Yeah? Oh, what is it? I'm sleepy. <laughs> Morning, Wyatt. Oh, morning. Breakfast up yet? Sure is. I ain't had mine yet, though. <laughs> Thought I'd uh, uh, set a mite with you. Maybe we could talk. 
It's hard to talk and eat at the same time. <laughs> not for me. Uh, reckon not. What do you got this morning? Eggs. Well, make it two. Look them straight up. Bacon with them. Sure thing. Uh, two up, Eddie. Bacon. Uh, the share table be all right? You sure you're hungry? Sure. Well, why, sure. That's what I figured. Come on, Pop. Let's have some grub. Oh, doggone. He would have to come in here. Who? Oh, that big cowboy. You know, know him? No, can't say as how do. Uh, George Peshower. Oh, that Peshower, huh? He sure. Oh, you heard of him, huh? Uh-huh. Uh, yeah. Gunman. Yeah. Poison. Plain, ordinary hey, poison. Hey, Pop, for the grub. Rustle it up fast, well, huh? As soon as we get around to you, George. Now. Yeah, but Ed is still in the order. Good. I'll take it. Tell him to bring it over. Must be hungry, huh, George? Was you talking to me? Yep. Now, now, take it easy, boy. Now, take it easy. Move over, Pop. Now, listen, George. I don't want no trouble in here. Then don't ask for it. Now, you. Me? Yeah. Who do you think you are calling me George? I don't mind if you call me Wyatt. It's real friendly-like. Say, you ain't looking for trouble, are you? Nope. Wait a minute. You said Wyatt, didn't you? Yep. Like it? Last name, Earp? That's it. Look, boys, don't. I just got that new looking glass sent in from Kansas City. Shut up. So you're Wyatt Earp, huh? Uh-huh. The marshal from Ellsworth. I ain't marshal anymore, just a plain citizen. Boys, come over here. Boys, meet Wyatt Earp, the marshal at Buffalo Ben Thompson. Howdy. Uh, you ain't wearing a badge now, huh? Nope, turned it in. Figured I'm going into some kind of business for myself. Couldn't be you turned yellow after that play, could it? After one lucky day? That wasn't nice, George. You don't like it, huh? Nope. Want to do something about it? I... Well? No. <laughs> All right, Earp, that's sensible of you. Now, you stay in Wichita as long as you feel like it. But don't pin no badge on here. We don't like peace officers. The day you pin on a badge is the day you call open season on yourself. Understand? It's pretty plain, George. All right, come on, boy. You sure you're white, Earp? If I ain't, I shaved the wrong man this morning. But he called the turn, and you took it. Yep. Why? You are wearing a pair of guns. Sure, but you see, Pop, I was looking straight at six nasty cowpokes. I don't mind playing against odds, but that deck was a little cold. I heard tell you was the fastest on the draw of anybody. Maybe, but I'll tell you a little secret, Pop. Why I didn't draw? Yeah. Why? I'm hungry. Hold up a minute there. You mean me? Yeah, you. What can I do for you, mister? You're Wyatt Earp, ain't you? Appears to me a lot of people in this town like to ask me that. Well, are you? All right, I am. Uh, you got to come with me to the mayor's office. Oh? Maybe I don't want to see the mayor. Earp, you got to come with me. I'm deputy marshal deputy here. Deputy marshal? Uh, no, no, no. Don't try no play, Earp. You better come peaceable like. Ain't much else a man can do when he's looking smack bang in the end of a 45. Uh, Throw down your guns. Ain't wearing them this morning. Huh? Oh, all right. Now, get off of your horse and walk in front of me. I'd kind of like to know what this is all about. You'll find out at the mayor's office. Let's go, Herb. Sit down, Wyatt. Oh, thanks, Mayor. I guess you're wondering why I had you brought here. Yep. What are your plans here in Wichita? Well, Mayor, I got $7,500 in my clothes. Maybe I'm thinking of going into business. Well, then you wouldn't be interested in another job. Depends. All right. There's a marshal's badge. Want to put it on? Well, I hear that putting on one of these badges is declaring open season on yourself. Well, this town needs a peace officer bad. Uh, looks like it. What do you say? Well... I was figuring on setting up in business. I'm pretty young, Mayor Hope. Things look pretty good to me. That badge might slow me up. 
permanent. Look, Wyatt, Wichita has been backed into a corner by every gunman, bully, and bad man that hits here. They gang up and make every decent citizen afraid to stir out and open his mouth. Peshaw is the head man. Yeah, in other words, get rid of Peshaw and the thing's over. It'll clear up a lot. What do you say, Wyatt? We'll pay 125 a month, furnish guns and ammunition. I told you, I got 7,500 in my clothes. The salary don't mean anything. You're turning this down, then? I didn't say so, Mr. Mayor. Then what do you mean? Hey, if I took this job, it'd be for one thing. It ain't the job or the badge, and it ain't me personal. It's something a lot bigger than you or me or Peshar. Maybe it's the country. It ain't gonna grow if men like Peshar keep shooting it down. Of course not. You want that bunch cleaned out, huh? Uh, uh, well, uh, Wyatt... Yeah, what's the matter? Well, you see, Wichita's a cow town. We depend on the cow hands coming in from the trails to spend money here, to bring their cattle here. If we, well, if we play too heavy, they'll use some other town. How are you going to clean them out? That'll be your job. Uh, let's put it straight. How, f- how far can I go in enforcing ordinances? Ordinances? What ordinances? No toting guns past the deadline I'll set up. Wait a minute. You can't put in an ordinance like that. Why not? Well, they won't stand still for it. Look, Mayor, I still ain't picked up that marshal's badge. Either I play it my way or I don't take a hand. Well, how far can I go? Well, all right. All right, Wyatt. The limit. Give me that badge. Hey, look at this, will you? Look at this. By order of Marshal Earp, there will be no wearing of guns past the deadline set up. No gun toting? What's he talking about? Who's he think he is? And listen, there'll be no riding of horses into barber shops, stores, or saloons. <laughs> this guy ain't gonna last long. <laughs> I got my guns on right now, and I'd like to see anybody make me take them off. I'll wear them. Take off those guns, Cowpoak. You're past the deadline. Take them off. Who do you think you are? I don't have to think much about it, Cowpoak. (laughs) I see you ain't wearing guns. Nope. If you was, you wouldn't talk so big. You're wearing them. Want to go for them? Go ahead, shorty. Give that big mouth what for? Please, ma'am, don't talk like that. It ain't ladylike. Why, you, you, you big stuff shirt, you... Well, ma'am, I... you're getting all red in the face. Shorty, you gonna let him talk that way to me? Erp, you ain't got a chance. Why, there's 20 of us Take here. Take a look in the storefront, Shorty. There's three deputies with shotguns ready to cut loose if there's any trouble. Now, take off those guns. All right. Well, all right, but you're just asking for trouble. Sure. Now, that goes for everybody. The next man I see wearing his guns inside the deadline, I'll bend a forty-five over his head and put him in a calaboose. These ordinances are going to be enforced, and that means for all of you. Me too, Mr. Marshal Earp. You too, George. George, let him have it. Seems you're getting awful big, Earp. Maybe so, Peshar. Depends on where you stand. I'm wearing my guns. Yeah, well, maybe you ain't seen the ordinances yet. Maybe I have. George, you've been drinking a little. What about it? That's the only reason I ain't bending something over your head right now. You don't know what you're doing. Don't I? You got deputies with shotguns lined up, and you ain't wearing guns. Mr. Marshal, I think you're a yellow coward. Better shut up, George. What for? I'm going to speak my piece right now. I told you when you come here that as long as you kept a badge off your shirt, it was all right. Now you got one pinned on. Go away, George. That's liquor talking. I said you're a coward. Peshar, the next time I see you, you better not have guns on. Or if you have, you'd better be sober. Hey, wait a minute. You can't walk away from this. But I am. I'm turning my back on you, Peshar. If you want to do anything about it, it's your play. Go on, George. Let the big four-flusher have it. Go on! Shut up. This is my play. Right now, Mr. Marshal Earp's playing in luck. But not for long. <laughs> You are listening to Kansas Marshall, starring Henry Fonda as Wyatt Earp on The Cavalcade of America, 
Sponsored by the DuPont Company. Maker of better things for better living through chemistry. As the second part of our story opens, it is several days after Wyatt's encounter with Peshawar. And in the back room of one of the dance halls... Sure, he's yellow. I called two turns on him already, and he ain't picked up a car. Is that right, boy? Right. That's right, George. Yeah, well, I don't know, George. Maybe he was just holding back. Ah, you're crazy, Billy. Ain't nobody holds back when another man calls him a yellow coward. Well, I, I ain't seen him draw. Maybe he is as fast as they listen, say. Listen, Billy, listen. This is your chance to make a name for yourself. Huh? Get Wyatt Earp, and there won't be a cowpoke, a gunfighter, or anybody else this side of the Rio Grande won't look up to you. Yeah, but what if he ain't wearing his gun? Well, he always does when he patrols the street at night. Yeah? Oh, maybe he ain't as fast as they say. He's a four-flusher, Billy. Besides, when you make your play, have your gun out. Oh. Soon as he goes for his, let him have it. Well, I... Yeah, but his deputies, what about them? Well, they don't patrol with him at night. Now, here. Here. Take my guns. Uh -huh. And remember, about nine tonight, right outside here. Howdy, Marshal. Howdy, Mike. Good evening, Mr. Ed. Evening, Mrs. Wingroom. Uh, making your patrol, Marshal? Yep, kind of quiet tonight. Eh, yeah, sure is. Looks like laws come to Wichita. Maybe so. Hold up, Marshal. Don't reach for them guns. All right, son, I won't. Huh. By Joe, they were right. Said you wouldn't make a play. Oh? Who said that, son? Never mind. And stop calling me son. All right. What's the play, mister? Don't come no closer. I just wanted to get a look at your face. Say, you're a pretty young fellow to be toting heavy iron like that. Shut up. I'm going to kill you, Orp. Got any reason for it? Yeah, because you're a four-flusher. You got a pair of guns on you? Well, jerk them. Son, I'm telling you to put that gun away. I won't say nothing about this if you go away peaceable. <laughs> it was right. You are scared to call a play. Well, go ahead, Orp. Draw. Well, you got the drop on me, son. You'd be liable to shoot before I could reach. Huh. You know, I'm liking this a lot, Marshal. Me. <laughs> I got the great Wyatt Earp treed, and I'm listening to him yelp a little. How's it feel, Earp? How's it feel, huh? Why, you are a four-flusher. A great... Ow! Drop the other gun, son. Pete, get this kid to Doc Wingroom. He's just hitting the hand. Sure, Peshar put him up to it, Wyan. He had Peshar's guns, Mr. Mayor. Guess George figured that if that kid got me, every peace officer in the territory would be buffaloed. You might have been killed, Wyatt. Maybe. But I figured on letting the kid keep on talking. He was hopped up to it. As long as he kept talking, he wouldn't shoot. <laughs> Poor kid kept thinking what people would say about him instead of watching for my draw. Well, what now, Wyatt? Now... Well, appears to me like George and me got to play a little two-handed game. What are your plans? I don't rightly know yet, Mr. Mayor. But I got to make sure when we do tangle that I settle Peshar for good. Maybe I'll think of something pretty soon. See you for a minute. Sure, Mr. Mayor. Excuse me, ma'am. Of course, mister. Come on over to the side, Wyatt. What's the matter? Peshawar. Where? Riding in with a bunch of his boys. They're coming in to get you, Wyatt, and if they do, this town won't be fit to live in ever. I reckon that's right. He'll be here soon. 
Guess so. That all you can say? Get your guns wired. Nope. Are you crazy? I figure this way. Peshar knows this is between me and him. His boys know it. And he's head man only as long as his boys think he is. I don't know what you're talking about. Shooting him wouldn't do any good. Making him look kind of foolish would. What are you going to do? Uh, Peshar's pretty fancy with his fists, ain't he? Wyatt, you are loco. He's twice as big and fights dirty. Look at Pete out there. Peshawa did that to Pete's face with his spurs. Let's play it my way, huh? What? Oh, hey, hey, wait a minute, Wyatt. Come back here. Nope, can't keep a lady standing in the middle of the floor. Thank you, ma'am. You do right well yourself. Oh, that's real nice of you. Not at all. You expecting somebody, Mr. Earth? You keep looking around. Maybe you don't want to dance. Oh, sure I do. I think we ought to have more of these dances, don't you? What? The music stopped. Excuse me, ma'am. I guess our company's come. Evening, George. Come to the dance? Yeah. I come to the dance. Want to be my partner? Oh, that's right nice of you, George, but you ain't pretty enough. Real smart, ain't you, Marshal? I see you're wearing guns past the deadline, George. Yeah, and I'm stone sober tonight, too. So I see. Care to get your guns, Marshal? Nope. Just what I thought. You're too yellow to wear them. George, if I were you, I'd unhitch those guns and dance peaceable-like. There's some real nice gals here. You're a dirty coward. All right, George, I ain't wearing guns, but I got two fists and two legs. How about settling it that way? You? You rough and tumble me? <laughs> Hear that? This beanpole's gonna rough with me. <laughs> oh, you don't mean that, Earth. I never say anything I don't mean, Peshar. I'm calling the play. Either you back down or you pick up a hand. Well? Red, hold my gun. Come on, there. There's a room in the back. Let's go. Wyatt, don't. Wyatt, please. Take it easy, Mr. Mayor. Let's go in, Peshar. Sure, up. It's a pleasure. Billy, hit the music. Play loud. Better, better call Doc Wingram for George. He's a mite tired. Billy, I, I got a dance to finish. Hit the music. <laughs> Leaving Wichita, Marshal? Uh-huh. That's still a pretty song. Yeah. Now, where are you going now, Marshal? Oh, maybe Dodge City. Mm-hmm. I heard tell they could stand a mite of house cleaning there, too. That's what I heard. Well, so long, cowboy. So long, Marshal. Good luck to you. Thanks. See you around sometime. Mm-hmm. I'll be around. Get out. When you travel down the road that leads to nowhere Dripped along the trail that has no end. Mm -hmm. And Wyatt Earp left Wichita and went on to Dodge City and Tombstone, where he and others like him brought law and order to the frontiers that have today become the great cities and thriving farms of our land. We have told part of his story, which is repeated in the stories of other peace authors, some of whom gave their lives so that America might live and grow. Rebel down the road that leads to nowhere when you drift along the trail that has no end.
Now, here is Gain Whitman speaking for DuPont. The brooks are icy cold with melting snow, brim full to the banks. You have to feel your footing carefully in your waders and watch out for the rushing current. There's no thrill like it, not for a fisherman. Spring in the air, the earth dark and wet under last year's leaves. Birds flying north, the sun warm on the hand that holds the fly rod. And big trout in the ripples and pools, hungry and ready to strike. Fishing leaders used to be made by killing silkworms in vinegar, removing and stretching their silk sacks, and drawing them through special sizing dyes. Today, the most popular leaders for salt or fresh water are made of DuPont nylon. Nylon leaders are as strong or stronger than those made from the sacks of the silkworm. Forced out of a man-made spinneret at constant pressure, they are perfectly round and exactly as thick in one place as they are in another. They don't need to be moistened. They don't fray, split, or become brittle or sleazy. They're harder for the fish to see because they have less sheen, and they last for years. If you'd like to know more about leaders made of DuPont nylon and the best ways to tie them, you're welcome to a copy of DuPont's new illustrated booklet, Knots and How to Tie Them. Just write to the DuPont radio section, Wilmington, 98, Delaware. Since the new booklet on knots and how to tie them is just being printed, we won't be able to send it to you until the end of April. If you write to us, we'll keep your name and address on file, and when the books are available, we'll send a copy to you. Just write to the DuPont radio section, Wilmington, 98, Delaware. We mention these strong yet almost invisible fishing leaders because they illustrate so well the kind of improvement brought about by chemical science. A product once made in a roundabout fashion of natural material is now made, and made better, of material accurately fabricated under scientific control. Nylon fishing leader material is another of DuPont's better things for better living through chemistry. Richard Loper wanted to be a whaler like his father and his grandfather before him, but fate and his lovely wife ruled differently. Though Richard became more successful than any Stonington whaler, he always kept his longing for the sea until, well, you'll hear the story next week, starring Dana Andrews with Anita Louise in That Skipper from Stonington on the Cavalcade of America. Music for the DuPont Cavalcade is composed and conducted by Robert Armbruster. Our Cavalcade story tonight was based on the book Frontier Marshal by Stuart N. Lake and adapted for radio by Russell Hughes and Maury Robinson. Henry Fonda can soon be seen in the RKO picture The Fugitive. In the cast with Mr. Fonda were Ozzy Waters as the singing cowboy, John McIntyre as Peshauer, Herb Butterfield as the mayor, Jerry Hausner as Billy, and Horace Murphy as Joe. This is John Heaston inviting you to listen next week to Dana Andrews with Anita Louise in That Skipper from Stonington and in coming weeks to Don Amici, Douglas Fairbanks Jr. and Ann Baxter on the Cavalcade of America brought to you by the DuPont Company of Wilmington, Delaware. <laughs> the Cavalcade of America came to you from Hollywood. This is NBC, the national broadcasting company.